Mike Kennedy with you today. Ham radios, handheld radios. Uh, these radios are compromised because they need to be portable. So they don't have so much power, they don't have as good antennas, and overall they're just not as good as a base unit or a unit you'd install in a car. Uh, typically these are these are five watts, around five watts or lower. It's funny the uh, this one's supposed to be eight watts, but it only puts out five. I haven't heard the measurements on this, but this is supposedly five, so I'm going to guess it's really three or four watts. But you can see the difference in these two antennas. Uh, two meter and 440 have a length that can be used for both of them. So we have this antenna here uh, that it works well with both bands. Now this radio has uh, can do uh, 2 meters, 440, and 220. So it's got a different antenna. So it's got to pick an antenna that you can do all three of those bands with. And guess what? This ends up starting to be kind of a compromise, quite a big compromise. And so the idea is how can we, if this is what we've got, what can we do to uh, increase the range or get more, you know, enjoyment or say you're in an actually in an emergency situation, actually hit a repeater with one of these or uh, communicate with someone that's say you're, you're out camping or something, uh, you know, car camping, you, this is gonna use the car. So here's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna get a little patch cord. This goes from the standard end to an SMAN. This is what most radios used at one time, especially the higher power radios. You'll still see that this will mate on to the back of, uh, of a ham radio, other radios too, CB uses, I believe too. But the thing is, this antenna is, is quite a bit different in size and configuration. So, we're going to use this to mate with the radio to allow us to go to a standard magnetic mount antenna for the car. And I'll show you that in just a moment. But what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to, uh, you know, put this in, snug fit it in to make sure it fits real well. And then this is going to go to our ag mount antenna. So here, here's the antenna here that I have. You can see it's not that it's not that big. It's got a magnet on it, a strong magnet, and it's got the end that now, like I say, would interface with that the larger size, like an ICOM or the ASU type. A ham radio that's mounted right in your car. Now we can mate it to this uh, with no problems at all. So we're just going to we just put it together and uh, basically twist. See if I can do this with all <laughs> with all with. But you can just uh, twist it in. There. Now we have a connection. Now. For this radio to, the, this antenna to work well, antennas have two legs, but you don't really notice it. I mean, you don't no, notice it with a one of these that only has one antenna sticking up, but believe it or not, you're actually the other part of the antenna. It's actually using your body as part of the antenna. Now, with this, we've got one leg up here, and the other leg is going to be uh, the car itself. The, the other connection is close enough here, so it's going to couple to the actual car and become an antenna. Now, instead of just doing this on the on top of the car, which is hard to see, I'm just going to do it here.
So here you can see, you can see this is a quite a strong magnet. So you can have this on the top of the car uh, and drive around, do just about anything with it. It comes with quite a long cord. Usually it's like they're like 12 or 13 feet long. Well, this allows me to put it on the top of the car and then thread it through one of the windows or the sunroof to come inside because normally, you know, we're going to be using this inside. Uh, so uh, that really works well. Now, of course, today's a rainy day. We're not going to use the car roof, but we would keep one of our windows down a crack and we would, before we connect the radio, we would have passed this in through a window and then connected it up. Uh, you want to be careful not to, when you're rolling the window back up, it can touch this, but you don't want to pinch it because you can uh, make these cables non-functional by, by compressing them too much. My car, this van has some windows in the back that open like this, and they've got some really big gaskets around them. So that would kind of be ideal that I could connect this up and go out through that back window and it would work great. So now we're going from, you know, what can only be called a compromised antenna that was on this radio to begin with to a, uh, an antenna that's made for two, four, two, excuse me, it's made for two meters and 440. So I can use either of those bands on this and it's going to be have a really big increase in function. I mean, you're going to notice it immediately because you've gone again from something that's antenna to something that's a halfway decent and is using your, uh, your car as the ground plate. Uh, and that can be the whole name of the game. This puts out a couple watts, but with this antenna, it will kind of like double, make it appear that the power's been like doubled because it's tuned for those uh, bands and it uh, just has gain to it. Instead of like a, a rubber duck antenna, they usually call those, the small ones, uh, they're, just, they're just poor. <laughs> but, you know, if you're moving around, you need something, right? So... If you can swap off a little mobility, this can allow you to get a lot further with the radio. Uh, and now what are we talking about cost here? I'll, I'll put some links below, but at the time I got this antenna, it was like $39. It's a diamond antenna. The patch cord here, I think was 10, but again, I'll look through that and see. It, the experience of using it is just going to be so much better. Uh, and uh, you're just going to notice immediately. So, like I say, if you were in a situation uh, where you wanted to set up a base camp, you know, say, or this could be the, the base and it, someone could be here, or just in case you're off somewhere out of cell phone range, and you have the right frequencies programmed into this, you could get some help. This one actually has, uh, it came, uh, this was a gift to me, so, uh, but I believe he got them pre-programmed. So this has just got dumped in it, all of the main repeaters. So I could find one close to whatever area I'm in, and I could transmit on that. Uh, now, Remember I mentioned that this does three bands. Okay, we got the two meter and the 440, which it will do here. Well, I wanted to want to put this on one, the 220 band and try to transmit because this antenna is not tuned for it. And uh, even though it's just a couple of watts, some of that power kind of come back, come back. You could think of it as being kind of like a dam in here because this antenna is wrong, isn't tuned for the right frequency. And that can cause some of the power to come back and destroy your radio. And, you know, these are inexpensive radios. They probably don't have a lot of what they call front-end protection on the finals. The circuits that are, you know, are bumping the power up. So it could be easy to burn those out. And, you know, where these radios cost so little, you know, they're like anywhere from, well, 
$25 and up, say, uh, you can't really get them repaired. You would just buy a new one. But that's a pain. You don't want to do that, especially if you're depending on it for some kind of emergency use. So it's very important that you know uh, which band you're on and that it meets with the antenna you use. And like I say, don't uh, if you don't know that this antenna does uh, any bands other than two meters, then you better just keep it on two meters. But when you purchase an antenna, it will tell you uh, what band it will work with. Now, you can construct antennas too. You can make antennas, but again, they have to be tuned for the frequencies that they're going to be used for. And we'll talk about that a little later on. But this is a pack, a, a solution that you can just buy. You get, I say, you get the radios are like 25, the, the antennas like 40, patch cords like 50, I mean, excuse me, like uh, 10 or 15. Uh, and you've got a complete system. And this would be a good system to start on. And eventually you'd be replacing this in your car with a larger unit that, you know, can put out, uh, you know, anywhere from, depending on how you adjust them, from 10 to 75 watts, maybe. So uh, there we go. Replacing the rubber ducky, having an adapter patch cord so that we can use the antenna optimized for 2 meters and 440 is going to drastically increase uh, the effectiveness of your communications.